I'm on a quest to find music and art. Supporting local talent is the place I start. Yeah, this is our culture, the place to be. Games, books, arts, and crafts and jewelry. This the guardians of the geekery. 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 And now for today's episode of Guardians of the Geekery with your hosts, Matt, Carol, and Joey. Oh my goodness. Awesome. to uh, Guardians of the Geekery podcast. This is a special The Geekery Market edition. Welcoming back one of our favorite folks, author Jen Guberman and the Neon Palm. So <laughs> awesome. And uh, just real quick, the uh, Geekery Market is, you can find out more information at the geekerymarket.com. Uh, we're going to be at the Cabarrus Arena and Event Center once again. Over 30,000 square feet of all your geeky goodness delights. And then when you get there, you don't have to drive around forever circling, looking for a parking space because there's over 2,000 parking spaces. This is a relief for us, trust me. And uh, once again, we're partnering with our uh, ch- charity partner, um, Second Harvest Metro Lina, doing great, great uh, work in the community, helping uh, folks uh, get nourishment and uh, food. So please bring a non-perishable food item, and uh, we're just really excited. But hey, Jen, welcome back. How have you been? I'm good. Thanks for having me back. We are excited to have you back. So this is our second year. So you have only been at the Cabarrus. You do not know our previous struggle. Although you said you had been, <laughs> you had been to an event or did was your first event last year? Um, I think I had been before the name change a long time ago. Like I don't, I think I was still in school and went with my mom. It was, uh, it was in a hotel. There was a small room at the time. Oh, yes. That was the first yeah. one. So the yeah. 2016 okay. one. Yeah. So yeah, we've grown a little bit, a little bit since yeah. then. So yeah. no, it's huge. <laughs> well, welcome back. And um, of course you are an author, but you also are a crafter as well. So you have yeah. a two for table. You have a little bit of both, but um uh, we've had so much fun following you on TikTok, so I want to applaud you for your ability Thank to you. do good TikToks. I'm always impressed, and I'm like, oh, yes, I need to go and do more stuff like that, but <laughs> I can't always get it together. But uh, It's so, hard. It's hard to find time. It's it, hard to it find is. time, and and with the Geekery Market, obviously, we talk about the market, our brand, but with my own personal one, it's like, I am too all over the place to have like one brand. So it's like, sometimes I'll sing you a camp song. Sometimes I'll show you what I'm about to wear for the podcast. Sometimes I'm just going to tell you a random thing that I thought of, you know, so it's, it's but all. That is your brand. It works. <laughs> <laughs> I just get giddy about a lot of things. That's my brand. I love so. it. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since last year. So. Sure. So, of course, as an author, I've been working on some writing. Um, so with, you know, I have little visuals. So last year, I think it was the day before Geekery, I had released um, Death Riser of Darkwood from the Ashes. So I'm working on book two. I'm more than half done with that. I've also been working with a group of local authors. Um, my first time ever being in an, in an anthology. For some reason, I have a hard time saying that. Um, <laughs> in an anthology. <laughs> Um, and so that's been really exciting. I finished up the story for that, but it's our first time as a group doing this. So we were hoping to have it by November. It's getting pushed back just a little bit. But in the meantime, I also, um, cause I, I have all these ideas and fun things and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to actually do any of these. And this time I actually pulled the trigger and I did a fun creative thing with my books. That's not just the books. Um, so I don't know if you saw my TikTok yes, recently yes, announcing yes. your book boxes. Um, so these are really exciting because I plan on having these at Geekery. I will hopefully have one for some of my other books as well. But for now, just kind of testing the waters with Death Riser. So it'll come with a signed paperback. I've got a little cute little sparkly baggie full of stickers. And some of the stickers are holographic, which I'm a sucker for. Because I love anything shiny. Yes. (laughs) If you can't tell from the rest of the box. I have. I don't know how well you can see them. Here, I'll even open it up so you can see it a little bit better. But I've got pins, which are little ravens on skulls. That's Steve the Raven. That's the main character's pet. And I have fun plans for him in book two. I have 
T, which is based on one of the teas that's in the book. Um, the main character, Tara, her younger sister, Zayla, it's like her comfort thing is drinking Ida Berry tea. And Ida Berry is not really a real thing. So I was like, how can I make this tea real? And so I found a company that you can source individual ingredients and they're all certified organic. Um, and I made Ida Berry tea and it should be enough to make yeah. several cups too. So that way somebody can actually really immerse themselves in the book and have the tea my language here <laughs> yeah if, if your if your computer dings jen while you're talking it's carol has already ordered her, ordering the her book tea. So. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> i do plan on i'm trying to because i'm new to like tiktok shop and instagram shop and all that. it's all way over my head i'm still figuring it out um but i'm trying to get all that sorted so I can also sell little bundles where if you already have the book but you want all the other goodies then it could be like a packet of just the goodies or somebody can buy just the tea or whatever it might be so that's all coming later down the line as well um but it also comes with little annotation stickies various colors um some little they're metal bookmarks which is why Ooh. it's super shiny Ooh, um nice. which the I don't know if sigils is the right word that's just what I've been using but they're like little icons I guess for yeah. each of the types of like schools within the magic school and then the last piece which I'm kind of obsessed with this I'm going to take it out of the envelope too just so you can see it better on camera because it's very glossy um but I have character art oh yeah I am obsessed the, the artist did such a phenomenal job because I was really nervous trying to find somebody online who could really get because you know you have your picture in your head and you're like this is what it looks like yeah. And you describe it and you're like, ooh, I really hope this person I'm paying knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and she did even better than I could have asked. Like, I love the colors. I love, oh, I'm just obsessed. She did such a great job. So I'm already, I commissioned the next one from her for Thieves of Joy. So I'll have that box done too. She's going to start working on that mid-August. And I'm so excited. So yeah. uh, Okay, oh, not putting things. any pressure on you. But since you also <laughs> have Neon Palm, you might consider putting that on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt because with the black edges, Ooh, you could do that on a black yeah. shirt yeah. so perfectly. And mm -hmm. I really yeah. love it. I, I love the art too. Good. I really yeah. love the art. So she did a great job. I, I do want to do more with this. Like even just magnets or something. Like it's yeah. just, it's oh, pretty. Yeah. I want it on everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, tell us like about your books. What What is the, the uh, okay. Cause I know you got a trilogy before this yes. new one. Um, are they all young adults or or do they they vary? They do vary a little bit. So with Death Riser of Darkwood from the Ashes, this one is for sure young adult. It's young adult fantasy. Um, I've had kind of a younger crowd reading this one, um, which is really fun too. I actually, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked on so many stories. It's quick. No, no, that's <laughs> fine. I recently did a signing and it's because my other books, they're more new adult to adult. So I never really have kids reading it. And the latest signing that I had this mom came up with her kid and she pulls a fairly well-loved copy of Death Riser out of her bag. And she's like, we've been reading it together. We absolutely love it. And I was like, oh. people are reading it together. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that made my day. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, this one is YA. And then on, Thieves of Joy is probably my most mature one, just because it's a little bit darker and depressing. Made my mom cry twice. So if you like that, this is the <laughs> you. your mom this is for you so yeah, it's for you. you cried twice yeah she cried twice and when she got to the end she disowned me she's like no <laughs> i was like i did my job <laughs> and then kind of hefty but my trilogy um is a little bit more new adult um could go to it's just tricky with ya because it can go as young as i think like 11 or 12 and i wouldn't say that young um mostly just for the violence in it um but like older teens would be perfectly fine with those ones sweet and this is just like part of your shop you have books and then you have the neon palm i do i'm not good at sitting jewelry. still <laughs> which, is, which is jewelry yes jewelry and clay dragons so that's been uh my fun little project recently i've got i don't know how well you can see them we've got a cupcake. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a cupcake dragon <laughs> And so each one is completely different and they come with, this isn't this one's birth certificate, but they all come with their own birth certificates Aww. or technically adoption certificates. And so you get your little dragon and their little certificate. Um, I have one other one here. I had to show this one because I actually didn't make it. All of my other stuff I make, but my husband wanted to try his hand at making dragons last year because he's like, it doesn't look that hard. And he tried it and he did a phenomenal job. But oh also he's like, oh, that's so much harder than I thought. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but his first and so far only dragon will also be available too if you like his little sword wielding one 
Oh yeah. my gosh, that's so cute. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, when we did the Geekzillas, which are sock dragons, not to be compared <laughs> to yours at all, um, it was always so interesting what what we ended up with because we had volunteers come in and we would try to explain to them, okay, here's the pattern and here's how you kind of go and and stuff like that. And then we had those people who felt, you know, that they knew better. Mm-hmm. So, and sometimes they did, but most of the time they did not. So, <laughs> and then, then Carol and I would be at the convention and you would see us working on them, trying to make them adoptable. Like, please just adopt this little one for us. Cause uh, oh my gosh, I yeah. think the, the, Your the, cat, sorry. I'm, just... I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> she is being so into everything today. Oh. I think she has made an appearance on every podcast we've recorded. Yes. But we did um, have the storm, so yeah, last yeah. night. So I'm sure that freaked her out a little bit. So yeah. Um. So uh, with the, with our little sock puppets, I think the uglier ones sold quicker than the, the prettier ones. <laughs> yeah. There's something so endearing kind of about like so. an ugly craft, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my only thing was is that we would have these um building sessions at my house, and we had this one guy who came in late. Wouldn't let us explain to him how to oh. do it. Oh no! And then literally everybody else left, and we were like, "You could take it home and finish it." And he's <laughs> like, "No, no, I'm almost done. I'm almost done." And literally, my <laughs> husband was like, "I'm going to bed," and, like, and I'm oh. sitting on the couch, and we're like, "You have to go." So the next <laughs> time he came over to drop something off, we didn't even let him in the house. We're like, "Thank you so much for your donation to our event." <laughs> We will take that with us. Go home. Because we, we're afraid you're never going to leave. So right. <laughs> and we know you sleep here. <laughs> and, did that, and did that sock thing that he knew how to do, make better ever sell? No. No. So which came first, the writing or the jewelry? The writing. The writing. Um, I technically started writing when I was pretty little. It obviously wasn't good, but I, I did it. Um, <laughs> and I had tried writing a book even in high school. I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I really want to be an author tried writing a book I didn't have like an actual plot um and this is something I feel like I see a lot of writers struggle with where they have this idea but it's like they have things that happen they don't have a plot um and so they kind of struggle to actually write a full book because it takes a lot more than that and I didn't know that at the time so I was like I'm gonna write a book and I was like "Ooh, page five and this sucks (laughs) (laughs) Um, which sometimes I still have that feeling but I at least know how to combat that now um, and so I released the first one when I was still in college and I've been going ever since. And the jewelry, I mean, my like friendship bracelets as a kid, but I never really made jewelry until really that kind of started in 2020 during sh- the, whole lockdown. the whole lockdown. I ended up on Pinterest and I was like, what's this polymer clay stuff? This looks kind of cool. I ordered some and I was like, Ooh, I like this. I'm not good at it, but I like it. And then I just kind of kept going and it started with simple, very ugly jewelry and it kind of progressed it got a little bit better and then I started making little clay dra- well not this one technically I made this one but uh the little clay dragons as well that's so cool so what are some of the other things that you're bringing with you yeah, piles of things next to me to reference <laughs> I like to bring a uh, little visuals um I have it I feel like Geekery Market is the perfect place for other people who really like dragons and, and shiny things too. Which Well, I mean, I mean, our motto is a dragon. We've got Mimi the dragon. Exactly. So like, how could you not bring a it's dragon the thing? Match. So. so I have dragon. I, I have them as keychains. I also technically have them as necklaces. They're just a little bit heavier. So not everybody wants a heavy necklace. So keychains usually do a lot better. Um, but it's not. They're cool. They're so cool. They're cool. On a webcam. Um, but I have them in all different colors as well. They're very shiny. I have some with... Um, it's a powder that I use depending on the angle it changes colors too. Those are my personal favorite. They turn like blue to purple or green to gold. Um, I have, I'm, I'm just a food girly. I really like food. And so I make charcuterie board earrings. Which oh I my gosh. Very hard to see on a webcam. <laughs> I do those awesome. in all kinds of different shapes and sizes too. More of the oval ones. I've got circle ones. I've got slightly bigger ones. Um, <laughs> probably the most tedious little thing that I make. Um, which is why I don't usually have a ton of them available, but I have little ramen bowls, which are oh my god, oh my god, oh, oh. I have to roll those tiny little needles and tiny little green onions, and they tend to like stick to my fingers really bad, so it it takes a a minute. But wow. those ones are always really fun, just because again, the webcam is not going to really catch the detail in there. But I was really excited when I figured out how to make those. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. No, no. I love that stuff. And that's the kind of stuff that you just don't find anywhere. Right. Like right. you, yeah. that's what makes it so cool is people are like, where did you get that? And it's like, well, I had a friend that had polymer clay and she just put it all together. And so um, you just can't find it everywhere. And that's right. what, what we love about having a juried craft fair where you've got you know, books, each book hopefully is unique enough, right? But right. Um, it's the the handcrafted jewelry and stuff as well is just so unique. And it it really gives people an opportunity to get something. Can't just go on Amazon and find, or even right. if you find it, it's not going to be to the level of detail. No. Yeah. Because you it's, it's somebody just trying to crank them out. It's not yeah. somebody who's making these small batches of, of, of crafts. So I will oh. say I do have options too because I know it's it's geekery and we're all there because we like geeky things. But inevitably, somebody's going to be there because they got dragged along with somebody who that's yes. their thing, and there oh, are people yeah. who are like, none of this is my thing. And so I do have things that aren't, you know, food earrings or little dragons. I have just like really pretty earrings. <laughs> I've got those. I do have one of my personal favorites to make. Um, it uses recycled CD, like this oh. one, old CD. You can use like the foil that's on it, essentially. Mm-hmm with some clay and it captures pretty colors and shininess and I have those as necklaces yeah. earrings all of that too so if you just like shiny things I got yes. you covered there too <laughs> yes so, so bring your raven friends yeah. <laughs> your pro <laughs> friends and yeah. let them buy all the shiny <laughs> yeah I wanted to go back to the pin because I love the fact that the pin from your box is I'm sorry I love this scarf because it's a peacock and for those who are listening along at home um, you know, and aren't watching, I, I've got peacock stuff on, but it keeps slidy. Um, uh, but the pin, the backer board is oh. the cage. And that's just so clever. Thank I would you. be heartbroken. Like I would want to wear the pin, but also want to keep the board because I would want them to see the little cage. So <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I yeah. was very excited when I, cause I wanted a way to present the pin and I was at first just going to like throw it in a little baggie in the box but then I was like I can make it like a whole piece and I was like well what what do I put a bird on I was like oh a cage duh yeah <laughs> no, that's so clever <laughs> it's so clever so Thank I you. love it I love it and so um you said you were working on anthology can you can you spoiler us the name of the anthology do we know yet or um that has like- to be decided as a team and we don't know yet because I think there are still one or two writers who are still finalizing their stories um okay so we we know the general theme is portals and doorways um so okay. it's a collection of sci-fi and fantasy and they all have to in some way shape or form revolve around portals or doorways and so that's uh i went for the doorway route fantasy and doorways um i guess i can spoil a little bit about mine i, I won't spoil too much about the collection as a whole Ooh. and everybody else's but um with mine essentially the idea is think of like in old school like a speakeasy essentially but it's where all these fantasy creatures can go and truly be themselves and where they have to like they have to act normal and human out in public but they can be themselves in the speakeasy but then somebody shows up there that uh they essentially absorb others and some things start going wrong and oh my gosh find that a uh, door to the speakeasy speakeasy isn't always um so representative of freedom anymore Ooh. I love nice. anthologies because first of all, if you're, it's, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but it can be the TikTok of finding new authors yeah. because you can see little snippets of them. Mm-hmm. And my TBR is taller than I am, yeah. but, <laughs> um, but I was very excited because I unwrapped um, uh, anthology that evidently got put in our closet in the Amazon box or it, you know, in the shipping box from May. And uh, I was like, Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of writers in here that I know, but I've never had, I haven't gotten to reading their book yet. Right. And um, it's just a great way to kind of say, okay, this is a style of writing that I really mm-hmm. want to read more of. Um, right. And so it's a great way to do that and be introduced to other people that you're like, okay, whether it's, you know, like a Baba the Monster Hunter, where it's one of the stories. And so now, you know, you can go, if you want to go live in that world, you can go read five others, or it could be a departure where it's like nothing to do like the other stuff, but you kind of see 
um, the author's muscle of, of their mm-hmm. writing muscle and seeing what other stuff that they can write. So if you like their sense of humor or their way of describing things, um, mm-hmm. some people are very narration oriented. Some people are very, you know, action oriented. Some, uh, I am one of the people that I just like to see a bunch of talking happen. <laughs> like I want, action I love dialogue. Too, but, I love, you know, a lot of dialogue. I love dialogue. Um, some of the books when it's five pages of description, I have to force myself to go back and read it. Cause I, yep. I find my eyes glancing for the quotation marks. I'm like, yep. yeah, where, where's the next quotation? So I'm bad um, about that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that's a great way. So if there's a Kickstarter or something, please let us know. Cause we would love yep, to absolutely um, let people know about that so that we can know that. But if people wanted to pre-order some of your stuff, like your book box, because I assume you're only going to have a certain amount with you. Um, or if they want to get their fill on Ida Berry tea there, Carol. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah. Tea, tea is my jam. Tea is my jam. Where where would they go to find out about you and be able to to uh, post about that stuff? So, so as far as pre orders go, that's something I haven't really figured out how to do yet. But if somebody does want to just simply, they can reach out to me on social media. Um, my tag on pretty much every platform out there is Jen Guberman author. All one word. Guberman is G U B E R M A N. Uh, so Jen Guberman author, one word on, I mean, I'm on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, or if they just want to email me at author at gmail.com, then I can make sure that I squirrel away enough supplies. So that way I've got theirs already set aside. I can sign things in advance if they want to do it that way. We can, we'll work it out. They just want to communicate it with me. Then can, <laughs> I can be flexible. <laughs> yeah. And you know, if you go to geekerymarket.com, we have a list of all the artisans. So you can go check out their various social media pages you'll be able to find author Jen Guberman because she starts with an A at towards the top. Um, <laughs> so you can um, actually click on it right there so that uh, you can see her spotlight article as well as her podcast and her contact information all right there. So if you're driving and you're scrambling for a pen and paper, don't <laughs> just, just go to the website afterwards and then you can order stuff from there. Um, and also see carol's cat and you can also see all the amazing jewelry and items and the dragons you definitely need to check out the dragons um so you can check them all out there as well so jen you did a little conversation and so um on tiktok not going to put you on the spot but i'm totally about to put you on the spot Uh oh (laughs) you talked about why you liked the geekery market and I just loved how you were talking about so many of the different things that people could go and see. So for somebody who's never been to the geekery market before, tell them a little bit about your first impression last year, knowing that you went in 2016, but now the new market. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your impressions and some of the stuff that you saw there while you were. Yeah, it was huge. First of all, (laughs) because I mean, again, my first impression was apparently the first year, which I didn't realize it was the first one. Um, And so, I mean, I knew it had gotten bigger. I mean, it was a different venue. I kind of assumed, but like still seeing it myself, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. And at some point I had my husband watch my table because I'm like, I can't be in this room with all this cool stuff and not go shop around for a little bit. And I was like, you know the spiel with my books, you know how to take cards, you're you're set. (laughs) So I wonder because there's just so much good stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to make it quick, but I just kept walking past booths. I'm like, wait, no, I got to stop and look at that. I got to stop looking back. There's so much cool stuff. And like, the thing is too, is at least for me, is like there's so many different fandoms and things and there are so many of them that I'm not even really aware of some of them, but like there's stuff out there for them. And like there's stuff out there with whatever random niche fandom you're a part of, there's probably something there for you. Um, Like I remember at one point though, I almost bought it. I was so close, but I was like, no, 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 be good. You bought enough today. <laughs> but uh, I, I might be eyeballing them if they're back this year. I haven't looked because I don't remember what they were called. But they had um, purses, like they had sewn bags and they had, I grew up playing World of Warcraft and they had a horde bag. And so I was like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I don't need it, but I want it. <laughs> There's something for everybody there. It's so cool. There were bags, there were little, um, I bought some like little, they're not pot holders. They're like little bowl holders. You know yeah, from Bubblefly oh, yeah. and Butterbees. Yeah, yep, yeah. I bought some of those because those were cute. There were some like food type things there too. I do have um, a friend who was accepted this year. One of my coworkers. Um, oh gosh, Rocky River. Why am yes. I blanking on it? Thank you. Yes. So yes. he does um, pixel art. 
So he yes. does like, these little wooden cubes and he does these whole cool pixel art things. He's doing a bunch of other cool things too, but like I know that's kind of where he got his start. Um, and he makes them of all kinds of things. I know a lot of them were like Pokemon characters too. Yeah. So it's cool to- and then, well, if you go on our, if you go on TikTok and watch some of the videos, it's the one of the ones I have on a lot of the social media is the Mario because that's mm-hmm. just so fascinating. Yeah, that one he, is so cute. He cuts each individual cube and stains it and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we have definitely some more food vendors this year. So we we definitely mm-hmm. Wow Fudge is back, so don't worry. Um, but I we've got fudge. somebody that <laughs> sells um barbecue sauce, so defiant sauce, and it's an award winning. They go to competitions and stuff like that. And it's not just about how hot it could be, it's it's literally the taste. And we've got uh Charlotte beef jerky coming and We've got Virgin in the kitchen who's got all sorts of sweet treats and everything like that. And we have Gammy's Jams, um, which some of her jams have alcohol in them. Ooh, so, um, wait a minute. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. At first I was thinking, oh, stocking stuffers. Like a lot of these would be really good for like family stocking yeah. stuffers because mm-hmm. it's right before the holidays. But then you mentioned that and I was like, ooh, personal stocking stuffer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm very listening. excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. So yeah. And then of course we have the concession stand on site and they also sell beer and alcohol. So, um, and then this year we actually moved the music inside. So um, Valentine Wolf is going to be doing some ambient music. So unplugged, but with the the bass and with Sarah doing the, the Gothic ooing and awing in the background, but we've also got um, somebody, a, a violinist and some others that are going to be doing music throughout the day. So you can just, sit there and yeah. drink your mug of tea or coffee and then think about the, that hoard purse <laughs> and go back and buy it and then you can wander around some more and you can play with legos and you know so it's really trying to make it a whole event so that you can really that. spend the day and because it's it's tough when you're trying when all you do is shop then your mind gets overwhelmed, right? Mm-hmm. Like the ADHD, you get overwhelmed and then you get to, to relax a little bit. But definitely stop by Jen. She's got a little bit for everybody, geek and non-geek alike. Um, and uh, make sure that you buy her husband's dragon. Although I kind of feel like you have to keep his dragon because it's the first one. I know, it's so cute though. He actually made this one for last year. It's one of the only ones I have left from last year. And so many, he's he was so heartbroken because he's like, so many people picked it up showed it to their family members, put it back down and walked away. He's like, I thought for sure someone Oh was my kidding. gosh, you gotta oh, adopt him now. Now you gotta adopt him. So. Right? So now I'm like, well, if nobody takes him home this year, I'm definitely keeping him because I will take that as a sign because look at how stinking cute he is. That is so cute. so cute. It is so cute and it's so great. Well, it Jen, it is always awesome to have you on our podcast. We love hanging out with you. Um, please Thanks make sure that. to yeah, please make sure to go check her out. Um, she oh has God. some of the best TikToks for for an author out there. So, so go and make sure to follow those. It's one of the ones where uh, I really enjoy watching it. And you go to book signings and stuff like that. So if people want to meet you in for per in person, um, before the Geekery Market, you can do that. Buy her book, and then when you come, you can buy her next book and and keep it going but uh check her out and uh keep us posted on the uh, anthology because we'd love to hear more about that as well so um thank you so much and we'll talk to you you soon talk to you guys later thank you so much bye bye that was an episode of guardians of the geekery thank you for listening check us out at guardiansofthegeekery.com and stay tuned for more content